It's a winter wonderland here in Athens, Ohio, as the Bobcats get ready for Game 3 against the Northern Illinois Huskies, the rubber match, as these teams split it right down the middle in their doubleheader on Friday. And now as the winds blow in, as the snow comes down here in Athens, Ohio, we're ready to decide this series. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to Bob Wren Stadium alongside Zach Mother's Ball. My name is Cedric Granger, and I'm excited for this matchup on so many levels. Of course, the perfect setting here. You get winter wonderland, the snow really coming down in all types of directions. But also with the way the wind is blowing, Zach, that could really play an impact today, especially for the batters for both squads. Yeah, you know what? We were looking at the flag out there a little bit earlier, and I'm pretty sure it was blowing out to right center. <laughs> I think it's blowing out to left center now. Uh, so full 180 degree change really for the wind right now. If you can get anything in the air, especially going to left field or going to wherever the wind ends up being, you know, later on in the game, you might be able to get it out of here. We'll see what the pitchers do if they try and keep it low, try and force ground balls instead of let people put the ball in the air. I think that would be the best decision for these pitchers. But obviously, you got to stick with what you're comfortable with, where you're used to pitching. So the hitters, again, you just got to go get something in the air, see if you can push it uh, over the wall in left field. Yeah, speaking of the pitchers today. On the mound for the Bobcats, it is Blake Gasky, the right-handed pitcher, making his fourth start, posting a 5.93 ERA. And you're going to see a nice mix from Gasky, a fastball at 88.3 miles per hour, a curveball 73 to 75, a slider 76 to 78, and a changeup 79 to 82. So that true four-pitch mix, Zach. Yeah, and uh, Coach M Craig Moore said he was a competitor. That was one of the main things that he harped on, how competitive Blake Gasky was. He said it was between him and Antle, and he said if uh, Gasky and Antle faced off, that would be quite a matchup uh, in practice or, you know, in an intramural. So here comes NIU, Eric Arato getting ready to lead things off. And after the first pitch, we will go through the lineup for NIU. The Huskies clad in red jerseys today, Bobcats in green, pretty aesthetically pleasing, complimentary colors, and a great game of baseball. First pitch paints the outside of the zone, and we are underway at 101. Erato leading things off. Andre Demetro will bat second. It'll be Summerhill batting third for the Huskies, while Kelly bats cleanup as there's a hit over to the left side, and that's down for a base hit. A lead-off single for Eric Arato. He took a hard turn around first, but he'll be content with a lead-off single for the Huskies. Yeah, and that's Arato's game. I mean, this isn't a guy who's going to go and pull it too terribly much. He has great at-bats. He goes deep into counts. Uh, four walks yet or Friday in that doubleheader, played both games. So this is a guy that's super dangerous. He's great at the top of the lineup, a guy who's going to get on base a lot. Here's Andre Dimitrov with one runner on, no score. And the second batter face for Gasky. Wine kicks and deals. Righty on righty matchup. And it's a called strike. Trying to play small ball today are the NIU Huskies. The Bobcats are, are pretty prone to do that a lot in games too. So we'll see how this goes. Just get some guys on the base pass. Get people running. Keep people warm. 0-1 pitch home. Now and misses outside. Count is one ball, one strike. Rest of the batting order for NIU. It's Cooper Cone batting fifth. Aaron Harper batting sixth. Kapicki is batting 7th, Parcells batting 8th, and Nelson bats ninth for the Huskies, coming in with a 4-11 record, looking to win their opening series of MAC Conference play. The pickoff attempt is not in time. It's a NIU squad that really struggled last year when it came to their record. They were 10-43, 5-12 in conference play. But if they can get a series win in their opening series, I think that'd be huge for the momentum for Ryan Copeland's squad. Yeah, that'd be huge, and uh, you know, this is Copeland's first year here at NIU, and after that tough season last year, it was smart to bring in a guy who was 131-38 and 38 at the D2 level, uh, Coach Copeland was last year with, with Illinois Springfield, so that record, trying to flip it around, and that's the, that seems like the guy to do it. Count is one ball and two strikes to Dimitraw, and that one not in time on the pickoff attempt, but to your point, Zach, yeah, he's a guy that knows the state of Illinois very well. When I looked on NIU's athletic website, some of their personnel, they noted how he has the proven ability to recruit particularly in-state talent. Here's the one, two, and that one's fouled off to stay alive. Yeah, and this is a guy who uh, told us he doesn't really see himself as – didn't really see himself as much of a head coach, a D1 head coach uh, at the D2 level. He wasn't actively looking – uh, to go up to the D1 level, but NIU reached out to him, and he just couldn't say no. Gasky on the mound. Dimitrov at the plate. 
Count one ball and two strikes here in the top of the first. Runner goes, and the pitch is swung on and hit to the right side and foul. No play there for Ohio, and the count remains the same as this is turning into a pretty competitive plate appearance for Andre Dimitrov. He's batting 244 on the season. Yeah, Eric Arado's doing a great job demanding attention over there at first base. Couple of pickoff attempts already. Tried to steal there, but that one was hit foul. I mean, he's got two steals on three attempts so far this season, so this guy is a threat on the base paths. Sure is. NIU 9 for 10 on stolen base attempts this year. And no wonder Gasky wants to try to keep him honest on those pickoff attempts. For Gasky, he was in the transfer portal. He started off his career at Southeastern Community College before coming over to the Bobcats. Yet again, another pickoff attempt. That's about four that we've seen already in this plate appearance. It's a chess match going on right now between Arato and Gasky. It makes you think, as a pitcher, you're not only competing with the guy that's up there at the plate, you're also competing with the guys on the base pass. Yeah, and that's big when you've got a guy that can steal, when he takes big leads, when he gets aggressive on the base pass, because as you're seeing it again, he's going to command a lot of attention. It's going to be something that you're thinking about, and it feels like uh, maybe Gasky's getting closer and closer to picking him off. I mean, these, these plays haven't gotten closer at first, so I'm wondering, Arado, the first couple of pickoff moves, he was like, hey, I've, I've got more, I've got more. So he's taking a couple extra steps, and now it's getting pretty close. He's pretty comfortable over there still, so. The shortstop pops that one in the air, shallow left center field, and a nice over-the-head catch by J.R. Nelson. That's a great catch by Nelson right there. I mean, we talked about the wind blowing out to left center field, so never really knew where that ball was going to end up, and he's able to make that over-the-shoulder catch. So two up, one on, and one down for Blake Gasky, and this brings us to the player to watch, Colin Summerhill. Summerhill hitting 315 on the season. Cedric, he has a 9, 796 slugging so far this season. I mean, he was 0 for 5 on Friday against the Bobcats, but he did walk uh, he did walk a bunch, walked four times, uh, had an RBI. So this is a guy super dangerous at the plate. The Bobcats intentionally walked him once on Friday in the first game, so they know how good he is. They know how dangerous he is. Yeah, the senior stands at six foot two, two 205 pounds as the runner goes, and that ball falls out of the glove of Cawthorne. Stolen bag for Eric Arato, the 10th stolen base of the season for the Huskies. And there it is. He's been threatening to do that basically the entire at-bat for Demetral and finally takes the base with Summerhill up there. Love to have a guy for NIU in scoring position with the best guy uh, at the plate. So now a runner at second, the 1-0 pitch. That one's inside, count as two balls and no strikes to Colin Summerhill. Player that started off his career at Triton and then transferred over to Troy before coming over to NIU. Still getting the stick in the black and red color scheme, just a lighter shade of red. 2-0 pitch, breaking ball, finds the inside part of the zone. Nice work there on the slider by Gasky. Yeah, good job by Gasky going to the breaking ball in a 2-0 count. Don't really expect that as a hitter as much. Uh, when you're up 2-0, you expect maybe a fastball or something like that, but he came in the front door with that slider. 2-1, hit to the left side. Here's Dolan, runs in and makes the play at first base. Two away in the frame. Dolan's a player that had a really good game two of this series. Yeah, I mean, this series, the last two games on Friday, they were really determined by, you know, big-time runs for, for the Bobcats. That was where a lot of their runs came from. Uh, a three-run homer in the first game, that was half their runs they scored. They scored six that game. And then Dolan talked about a, a three-run RBI double that accounted for three of their four runs. First pitch breaking ball finds the top corner of the zone like a postage stamp to Mason Kelly. Kelly, another one of the solid batters on NIU. One of four in this lineup that's batting over 300 going into this game. He'll take the next pitch. That takes a one-hopper right to the pitcher. Gasky underhand throw to retire the side and end off the defensive frame for the Bobcats. Four runners up and three down. A nice start for Gasky. And the Bobcats will grab the bats when we come back for the bottom of the first inning.
home half of the first inning here in Athens, Ohio. No score between the Bobcats and the Huskies in the rubber match. On the mound today for NIU, it's Adam Brower, and he's going to go against Cole Williams, who's leading off the frame for the Cats. You also see J.R. Nelson, Gideon Antle, the one, two, three in the order, are due up in the inning. We'll go over the rest of the lineup and introduce Brower momentarily as the first pitch on the money for a strike. But the rest of the order for the Cats, Alex Finney is batting cleanup today. Jackson Cawther in bats fifth. Paulie Mancino is batting sixth, while A.J. Roush, Bryce Smith, and Nick Dolan round out the rest of the lineup for the Cats. Brower's next pitch, once again on the money. He's been painting the middle of the zone. Yeah, he has two quick strikes. He's being really aggressive so far against the, the Bobcats leadoff hitter, Cole Williams. Williams, a 200 batter. Batting in the leadoff lead spot today. Righty on lefty matchup. And he'll swing through that pitch. Strike three. Chalk up 1K in just three pitches for Adam Brower. Certainly wasn't afraid to go after the Bobcats in that one. Leadoff hitter, a guy you expect to have better contact skills, to have more contact skills if you're the opponent. But uh, Brower didn't care. Three strikes on three pitches and, and sent him back to the dugout. Here comes J.R. Nelson. As this is a picture-perfect start right now for Adam Brower, the redshirt sophomore from Tinley Park, Illinois. And Nelson, he'll cling that first one up in the air to right center field. And no problem for C.J. Kapicki. And that's two up, two down, and just four pitches. Threatening a really quick inning. I mean, Brower's a guy who struggled a lot this season, a 13.11 ERA. He's thrown 11 and two-thirds innings, 0-3 uh, on the season. So he's had his struggles so far this season. He followed Coach Copeland from Illinois Springfield. Uh, this is a guy they trust, but a guy who's struggling early on. Well, he's going to have a big challenge here against Gideon Antle, one of the top batters in all of college baseball. He's already homered once in this series, and it's homered six times on the season. we got a couple of guys that can really match the baseball between Colin Summerhill of the Huskies and Gideon Antle of the Bobcats. 1-0 home. On the ground to the left side, Dimitrov comes up with it, makes the play, and just like that, talk about a quick inning. Brower flies through the first inning. We're headed to the second here at Bob Rin Stadium. No score in the rubber match. Second inning here in Athens, Ohio. Bobcats and Huskies are scoreless. Alongside Zach Mother's Ball, I'm Cedric Granger. We got Sam Mater and Jordan Bowes also here helping us out. A crew of four, but we're strong but mighty. Speaking of number four, here's Cooper Cohn, number four for the Huskies, leading things off. You'll see Aaron Harper and CJ Kapicki as well in this frame. Going against Blake Gasky, who deals his first pitch and finds the outside of the zone. I really liked. Gasky's pitch selection so far, he's done a good job attacking the edges, not just going right down the heart of the plate. Yeah, he's given 
the Huskies a little bit of trouble um, watching a lot of strikes early in the count. That one is flared. Over to left center field. Antle looking up and makes the catch. Unbelievable catch out there by Gideon Antle. Wow. Gideon Antle looks like he's a little shaken up. But he did make that catch to rob a base hit from Cooper Cohn. We just hope that he's all right. Yeah, he ran into the wall pretty hard. Unbelievable catch, though, as I said. I mean, up against the wall like that to have that kind of concentration. Uh, but this is a really important player for the Bobcats. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah, so training staff going out there to make sure Antle's all right. It seems like he's walking it off over on the track, but with a noticeable limp. Now, usually, Zach, I know with uh, home ballparks, one of the biggest advantages to being home is, in general, you know where the wall is. However, when you get a hit like that that is at the warning track, you have no choice but to try to find any way to bring that down as a center fielder. And Ansel did what it took to bring that one down as, once again, Bobcats trying to make sure that he's all right. The Cats team that is five and 5-7 on the campaign and really looking to compete for one of those top spots in the MAC. They were close last year. They finished number five in the conference. But I know that Coach Moore, he wants, for lack of a better term, more out of his team and knows what they're capable of. Yeah, this is a team, uh, the main thing that he told us was that they got to cut down on the errors. Uh, a lot of throwing errors for this team. And he said that was a big, you know, that was really frustrating to have all those throwing errors because playing catch is normally the first thing you do when you walk out on the baseball field for practice, for games, and all that kind of stuff. So having throwing errors at that level, the amount that they do has been frustrating for this coaching staff. It sure as that's something that they did a good job of in the first game or first series of the year against Lipscomb where they had almost no errors. But then after or starting with the Campbell series, that's when things started to go awry for the team. And now they're sitting at 21 errors on the season. Last year, Bobcats 15-15 and 15 in the Mid-American Conference, which was good enough for fifth place, as I mentioned. They just got edged out by Western Michigan and then the other teams to make it Ball State, Kent State, and Central Michigan. Speaking of two of those teams, Kent State and Central Michigan, they had a series that just went final earlier today. Kent State won the series 3 to nothing. It appears that Gideon Antle will stay at center field for the Bobcats, which is a great sign for the green and white. Yeah, I wonder if maybe the cold, maybe, uh, you know, knee was a little shaken up or something like that. Hurt a little bit more with the cold, just a blunt contact against the wall. Uh, had to shake it off. He looks like he's all right, still messing with his, with his pants and his socks. But other than that, I think, I think he looks fine. So Cooper Cone goes down on the F8 on once again was a fantastic catch by Gideon Antle to prevent a leadoff double or leadoff triple. And this sets things up for Aaron Harper, the third baseman for the Huskies. Sure, it's got to be a stark contrast for Harper, who played his high school ball in California. And you go over to Northern Illinois, you start playing in the MAC where you have snow games as a common occurrence. First yeah. pitch breaking ball is for a strike. Big, big difference. Your hands are cold. Your feet are cold. Doesn't feel great standing in that box. 0-1 pitch. Off-speed pitch taken for ball number one. Harper's a player that started all 52 MAC games last year, leading the team in hits with 62. Trying to keep some solid effort here, but this time he goes and chases at that pitch. Ken is one ball and two strikes. Some good pitch selection. Gasky showcases why his four-pitch mix is pretty dangerous. Yeah, Gasky's slider's been looking pretty good today. Uh, I think that's what, that was what was sent out to left center field in the last at-bat. But other than that, it's looked pretty solid. Well, that one is poked up in the air by Harper. And some good communication as Mancino brings down out number two. A couple of quicker outs so far this inning for Gasky. Uh, Broward did it last inning, just six total pitches in that bottom of the first, and, and now Gasky trying to answer with a low pitch count on top of the second himself. Here comes C.J. Sikpiki. Batting 167 on the year, working with the bases clear and two away in the frame. Fastball misses just outside. Count is one ball and no strikes. Sapiki came in 
uh, just as a, a pinch runner in the first game on Friday. Ended up 0-4-1 with the strikeout as that game went into a lot of extras and a couple guys got at-bats that maybe the coach didn't expect to get at-bats based on how long that game went. It's picky early on that changeup there. Good pitch once again by Gasky. Yeah, Ohio and NIU, they played a fantastic game in game number one as another fly ball over to the right side. And Mancino closes the door, a 1-2-3 inning for Blake Gasky. Each of these pitchers starting off strong. And the Bobcats will look to change that for NIU's pitcher when we come back for the bottom of the second inning. It's the rubber match, Ohio and Northern Illinois. Winner of this game wins the series. Huskies won the first game of the series, and that was an exciting fashion in 11 innings. And then the Bobcats, they bounce back and won 4-1 to one in game number two of the series. This one will decide it. Alex Finney, Jackson Cawthorn, and Paulie Mancino, the three you'll see for Ohio. And Brower deals his first pitch, and he starts this inning the same way he started the first inning with a strike. Yeah, certainly not afraid to throw strikes is Brower today. Again, just six pitches in that bottom of the first inning. Yeah, with Brower, you'll see an 87-mile-per-hour fastball, 64-70 to curveball, and then a 71-73 to changeup. It's a pretty solid pitch mix. His changeup, of course, working well off of his fastball. Used that early in the count. And now, right now, he's up in the count against Alex Finney. 0-2 home, breaking ball, swung on and fouled to the right side. Alex Finney brings a lot of utility for this team and has a lot of experience as well. The fifth-year senior who's improved with each season and has played in more games increasingly with each season. 0-2 home, that's fouled backwards. Finney staying aggressive in this at-bat, got down 0-2 early, but he's battling now. Yeah, Finney, a 244 batter, and looking to give the Bobcats their first hit of the game. The flurries fall, and the 0 2 popped up in the air to shallow right center field. And Jake Nelson makes the catch one up, one down, and four straight retire to start the game for Brower. Big change from what he's been doing early on this season. He's looked very good attacking the zone, not walking anybody, really not getting too many. Too many balls on anyone so far today. Two straight innings where the first batter's gone down 0-2. This brings us to Jackson Cawthorn, the freshman. Or actually, check that, the junior, rather. But first year at OU. Cawthorn won for five uh, in that first game on Friday. Yeah, first game Friday seemed like there was a little bit more offense going. Second game, the defenses sort of took over. Right now, defense is looking strong in this game so far. This is a chance for a bounce back for NIU and for Brower specifically. His last start came against the Bearcats of Cincinnati. Five innings pitched in that game. However, gave up his fair share of runs, seven earned runs in that game. But he did strike out three. 
in that performance. So he did give you a lot of innings. It's just got to keep the runs down. Yeah, I mean, this team, the Huskies, they've played a lot of tough, tough matchups. Abilene Christian to start the season. Then they played LSU twice. They played Iowa. They played UC, as you mentioned. So uh, a lot of these guys, a lot of the numbers might be a little worse than what they will be in MAC play based on the matchups they've had so far. Yeah, and they also played a lot of four-game series. That's something that Coach specifically mentioned as the next pitch is upstairs to run the count full. But in the interview with their head coach, Ryan Copeland, he really talked about how challenging it is to have really good pitching throughout a four-game series compared to the three-game series that we see in the MAC. Here's the payoff. Swing and a miss, strike three. Chuck up a second K for Adam Brower. Yeah, I mean, these, um, you know, group of five teams, these, these smaller schools, uh, they tend to have just the three pitchers that they, they want to lean on. So they've got a Friday guy, Saturday guy, and a Sunday guy. So when you get put in those four-game series, you end up starting bullpen guys who don't normally start games throughout the season, guys who aren't used to not coming out of the bullpen, you know what I mean, to starting a game right away. they got to get, get up into it. They're not used to throwing maybe as many pitches as your starters are. So it's just an uncomfortable situation. Don't tend to have enough arms to get through that amount of games, four games in a weekend. Nobody on two away. No score, bottom of the second inning between the Bobcats and the Huskies. The 0-1 to Mancino, and the count is evened up. One ball, one strike. That's a good point, Zach. I know one thing that was a huge change in the MAC last season was the switch from four conference games to three conference games in a series. You used to have to always play doubleheaders on Saturday, and you'd get a lot of splits. A lot of series would end 2-2 or 3-1. You'd rarely have any 4-0 series. But it made it where the pitching on Sundays used to be just atrocious. There was not a lot teams could do. You just have to lean on your bullpen. But now with the three-game series, you can have a little bit more consistent pitching, some more development as well for these players. Here's the 2-1. Yeah, and then you talk about those Sunday games where the starters have a lot more trouble because maybe they're not used to starting or they're not ready to start at that point in time yet. And then you got to go to your bullpen early in the game. But guess what? Your bullpen's already been taxed for three games, potentially a doubleheader earlier in that in that series so it's tough to have these guys that are that are ready I mean starter wise it gets a little bit rough but bullpen I mean you got it got a lot of guys who are pitching on shorter rest that they haven't you know rest that they haven't pitched on normally in their lives so it's tough to have arms for that full count to the freshman from St. Ignatius High School here's the three two swing and a miss strike three Brower went with the breaking ball and that shuts down the inning three strikeouts for Brower and we stay scoreless here in Athens, Ohio, headed to the third here at Bob Wren. Welcome back to the third inning. No score between the Bobcats and the Huskies. Blake Gasky, two scoreless innings so far. One hit allowed. And he's a guy that's coming off one of his best starts of the season. That came eight days ago against UIC. Five innings pitched. Only gave up one hit, one earned run, and struck out three. But one thing I noticed as he 
was on the money for strike one to Parcel is just the energy that he brought when he was on the mound. There was a lot of emotion that was there, and with each out, every time he got out of the inning, he was really igniting his guys. Yeah, this guy brings a lot of energy to the Bobcats, which is huge for a pitcher. You know, as soon as you get out of that inning, you want your you want your offensive guys to be hyped up, getting ready to get in that box. So not a lot of pitchers are as, you know, demonstrative as Gasky is. So it's big time for, for him to be able to, to hype those guys up inning in and inning out. See, there are people that are going to be taking their ACTs and SATs and all those important tests, and they just heard the word demonstrative from you, Zach. There you go. Great word choices. There's strike three. As Gasky picks up his first K of the day. Would you say that's demonstrative? I, I would. I would. <laughs> you know, I got I, I to gotta get my big words in every once in a while. It makes me feel smarter, you know? Of course, of course. I mean, we do got a college education, or at least are on our way to it after all. <laughs> Here comes Jake Nelson, the nine-hole batter, and he'll take the first pitch inside. Gasky not afraid to go in the front door with that slider. Now, normally you want to shy away from too many front door sliders because it gets it low and in, and obviously if you're early on a low and in ball, you're going to send it a long way, but those, those ones that look like they're coming at you and then just curve right into the strike zone, it's tough to pull the trigger on, but once you do, be a little more confident with, uh, with yanking that one down the left field line. Count as one ball, two strikes to Nelson. Batter that's batting 231 coming into this game. As overall, this is an NIU squad batting 243. As we rug him up, called strike three outside part of the zone after Gasky went inside for the first couple of pitches. Good stuff. Yeah, he's doing a great job painting the corners, as you mentioned earlier. Um, it's tough to tough to do a lot in this kind of weather uh, with the snow falling. It's it's gotten a little lighter recently, but these guys maybe not going to be as aggressive. Going to be a little colder in the box, little little more apprehensive to pull the trigger. There's foul ball as Arato comes up a little bit gimpy after that one was fouled into the toe. That definitely does not feel good, especially on a that. cold day as well. Too cold for that. Way too cold for that. Arato, the lone guy to get a hit in this matchup so far. No score in the top of the third. Base is clear with two away. Arato, an infielder from Sussex, Wisconsin, and went to Sussex Hamilton High School. He finds himself down in the count, 0-2. Quickly down 0-2. Yeah, I mentioned this is a guy who, who likes to be patient, but if you go after him, it's going to force his hand. Rato, a very patient batter. But he'll have to pick his pitches right here, the 0-2. Just missed a hair inside on the fastball. Count is one ball and two strikes. That was very close. I think uh, the whole Ohio defense thought it was a strike. Yeah, I don't think Gasky agreed with that ball call on that last on that last pitch. So Gasky steps off the mound to take a short breather here. So as I mentioned, Arado very patient. He holds the NIU record for most walks in a season with 51. Here's the one, two. And he'll stay alive in the count. He hit four walks on Friday in the two games that he played, and he was two for eight, four walks, had an RBI. Um, I mean, the coaches, Coach Copeland told us that uh, you know, sometimes I have to push him to be a little bit more aggressive. He waits a little bit too long in the counts. Maybe he misses some of his pitches. So uh, coaches have been told him to, to pick your pitch and find it even if it's early in the count. Well, he turns up the dial on the 1-2, hits that one over to right field, and has got himself an infield single. Eric Arato getting that batting average up. He's 2-for-2 two two on the afternoon. Zach, you could definitely hang your hat on this. He's got two hits in this game before anybody else can get a single hit. <laughs> yeah, I bet he's I bet he's <laughs> feeling pretty good. And remember last time, this is a guy who was really confident on the base pass, drew a lot of attention from Gasky, going to try to do the same thing here. Here's Dimitrol up at the plate. And once again, here comes the pickoff attempt battle. As we saw last time, Erato was on first base. Gasky had five throws to first base. Dimitrov had a pop fly to the shortstop last time he was up and now takes strike one. Yeah, he ended up getting a steal that last time he was on base, so uh, probably in the back of Gasky's mind. Dimitrov, a 5'10 senior from Rochester, Michigan. One thing you got to love about the Illinois area, especially the NIU portion of it, which, of course, in the northern part of the state. That's intuitive. 
but they are uh, pretty close to Wisconsin, not too far away from Michigan, not too far away from Indiana, so you can really recruit all around the Great Lakes. Here's the 0-2 home, and that ball's flared over to the left side, and that ball is still in the field of play and caught by A.J. Roush to retire the side. We're headed to the home half of the third inning. No score, but Arato, he's got two hits today for NIU. The Bobcats looking for their first hit when we come back on Ohio Bobcat TV. We're jugging along here in Athens, Ohio. Bottom of the third inning, no score between the Cats and the Huskies. You know, yesterday it was raining cats and dogs. Now today it's just snowing cats and dogs. I don't know if that's a phrase or not, but we'll see what happens. A.J. Roush, Bryce Smith, and Nick Dolan up at the plate against Brower, who's absolutely wheeling and dealing and making three straight innings with a first pitch strike. Yeah, looking at Roush, he's hitting 311 on the season, nearly a 1,000 OPS at 996. He was two for seven on Friday, so this is another guy. Uh, him and Antle are so good. Puts the barrel on that one over to center field and a nice running catch by Charlie Parcell on his high horse. Parcell, just a freshman, but an absolutely fantastic outfielder. Had a tough error late in the first game on Friday that allowed that game to go into extra innings, but other than that, He's been fantastic in the outfield, got all the physical tools to be a great defender. Yeah, Coach Copeland mentioned how even as a freshman, he commands the center field, which is impressive to yeah, come in and really get that respect from the other guys too. Yeah, you don't see that too much uh, with these freshmen. And out in right field, we're looking at J.P. Gauthier as there's a, a bunt right there. Yep, nice play by the pitcher Brower running off his mound. Pitchers are athletes too, and that's two away quickly as – one thing I've noticed about this team and was very evident in the interviews, Zach, was that Coach Moore said, all right, our team is going to be aggressive. And that really matters when any time you have any sort of pitchers that are going against you, even if it's early, even if that means they get out of innings quickly and they only see two or three pitches, they want his guys to be aggressive. But the counter to that is that allows starting pitchers to start to roll in the game if the Bobcats can't sustain hits. And right now we're seeing NIU getting through this game with very little wear and tear on the Brower so far. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Coach Moore called it the Bobcat philosophy, uh, going up to the plate, imagining that it's already an 0-1 count, gets you to start swinging early. And you're right, it does it does keep pitch counts low if you're not successful. Obviously, uh, Brower's faced the minimum so far in this game. So he's kept his pitch count pretty low, but this is a team that, that wants to put the ball in play and they want to get on base. So obviously, but not by walks, by hits. Um, so that, that can be pretty good. They can put up a lot of runs, 21 runs uh, on they Tuesday, can. or they can keep a pitch count low for a pitcher. So Roush went down on a fly ball. Bryce Smith grounded out, and Nick Dolan up at the plate and down in the count, one ball and two strikes. As Brower's looking for a way out of this third. One-two home, breaking ball, hit to the left side, and foul. Dolan had a bases-clearing hit in game two of the series, which... Ultimately was the play of the game, 
and the Bobcats' 4-1 to bounce-back victory against the Huskies. Yeah, nice double in that game. Uh, as you mentioned, only played in that second game, but obviously had a big had a big mark on it. 1-2, breaking ball, rung him up! Called strike three. Brower attacks the outside and comes up with another strikeout. Make it four on the day. We're through three innings as we head to the fourth here at Bob Wren Stadium. Top of the fourth inning, no score between NIU and Ohio. As you take a look at the manager in his first season at the helm for the Huskies, Ryan Copeland. We talked about how him being an Illinois native is much to his success. Also, speaking of success, four great years at the University of Illinois Springfield, and I love their name. They're called the Prairie Stars. And from 2020 through 2023, Copeland went 131 and 38. Dominance, absolute dominance. Yeah, this is a fantastic coach to bring in to maybe try and change the culture, used to a winning culture at Illinois Springfield, and he brought a couple of guys here with him. Summerhill chops that one on the ground to the left side, fielded by the shortstop Nelson, and is in time. You also see Mason Kelly and Cooper Cone do up in the inning for the red and black of the Huskies. Always love when these two teams match up from a uniform color standpoint. Green versus red games always seem to look good, but... With both of these coaches, something that's really interesting is they both were drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals. As back in 2010, Ryan Copeland, the NIU manager, he was drafted in the 32nd round by the Cardinals, played three years in the minors. The 0-1 slides in under the zone for ball number one. And then for Coach Craig Moore, who's in his third year, he was drafted in the 65th round by the St. Louis Cardinals. So they have that in common. wonder if they have any connections in St. Louis, try and get some of these players in there. Yeah, you never know. Of course, that's the dream for a majority of these players is the 2-1 cut on and missed by Mason Kelly, who's 0-for-1 on the day, had a ground out to the pitcher to end the first inning last time he was up. He'll chop that next one, a high chopper over the pitcher. Finney gets a good read on it. The throw is in time, a couple of... Dandy's in the field for the Bobcats, and that's two away. That's two more weekly hit ground balls at the middle. First one, as you mentioned, was uh, corralled by the pitcher. This one by the second baseman. So looks like Kelly might be aiming up the middle. Maybe that's just where his timing is so far on Gasky. This brings us to Cooper Cohn. One thing Coach Moore mentioned that he likes to see in his pitchers are guys that can miss barrels. It's not about, hey, you're going to give up hits. That's just inevitable with a lot of – pitchers in college baseball you're going against some really talented offensive players here and there but if you can avoid barrels that'll help and that one does get on the barrel for Cooper Cone and there is a two out single and NIU with their third hit of the afternoon that was just barely missed by J.R. Nelson I thought maybe when he jumped up in the air he was going to be able to to catch that one but it just got over his glove great piece of hitting there from Cooper Cone 
Huskies looking to sustain some offense. They have had one runner reach in a scoring position today. And now it's back in the opening frame. And now here in the fourth, Cooper Cohn on base. And here comes Aaron Harper up at the plate. Yeah, just the three singles so far for them. So I would expect them to be pretty aggressive on the base paths to see if they can force someone to get into a uh, scoring position. Harper puts one through, and that's in for a base hit. In the left center field, and each of these runners pushing. The throwback to second base, the tag is in time. What a play by J.R. Nelson to get it over to Alex Finney on the tag. And when Aaron Harper pushed his luck, Ohio makes him pay, and that clears the bases. No score as we head to the bottom of the fourth here from Bob Wren Stadium. Happy Sunday, everybody, as we are in the home half of the fourth inning, Bobcats and Huskies. No score as the pitching has loomed large today. The snow also starting to come down. It might be sticking a little bit to the turf as we speak. As we go back to the top of the order for Ohio, Cole Williams takes the first pitch inside. And for the first time today, Brower misfires on his first pitch of an inning. But he has dominated this game, Zach. Through the first nine batters that he's faced, four strikeouts, and barely anybody's been able to put the ball to the barrel. And there's a guy on base now for the first time, a hit by pitch, and Cole Williams gets plunked. Doesn't feel great in this weather, but feels a lot better knowing that you're the first base runner of the game for the Bobcats. See if they can finally get something going. Yeah, Ohio looking to sustain offense across innings. This was a struggle for them in their last weekend series against UIC, where they scored in just three out of the 27 innings However, they did take one in that three-game set against UIC. First pitch lasers into J.R. Nelson for strike number one. It's been an interesting schedule for the Bobcats. They started off the year against Lipscomb, taking two out of three. Pretty impressive win over there in Tennessee. And then they traveled over to North Carolina to take on Campbell, where they were swept. Pickoff attempt not in time. Then they split the UIC series, winning one out of three and then took down Youngstown State this past weekend to get to 5-7 and seven on the campaign. It won't be their last trip down south, though, as they will take on, of course, Virginia Tech later in the year. Also, Moorhead State coming up soon, too. Bunt shown, hit to the right side. Brower underhands it and picks up his one out at first. However, Cole Williams moves in the scoring position for the Bobcats. Yeah, that shows how much they trust Gideon Antel. Uh, a bunt with a guy on first and no outs. Normally you see that more with the guy on second uh, to try and move him to third with less than two outs. But with Gideon Antle, you want to get your guys in scoring position, and that's just what they did. Gideon Antle came into this weekend as one of the top batters in the entire country, top 15 in the NCAA, not just the MAC, but the NCAA. Brower kicks and deals in the first pitch, hit up in the air and foul to the right side. Yeah, 473 average and a 1418 OPS will do that for you. He's got six home runs, seven doubles so far, 17 RBIs already early on this season. He's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, he's had a 
Great understanding, according to Coach Moore, of the zone and pitches that are coming his way. A runner in scoring position in a scoreless game. The 0-1 breaking ball is low and away. And, Zach, I'm guessing you're going to see a lot of breaking pitches trying to keep it low in the zone as possible. Yeah, and you're going to see a little bit more uh, early pitches out of the zone against Antel. This is a guy who's only walked one time the entire season. He's only struck out three times, so he gets his barrel on a lot of pitches. Uh, so I'm not sure if they're going to want to to go as aggressive at him early. One-two count now. We'll see what he's able to do. Well, Antel chases that 1-1 one, one pitch high in the zone. Count is one ball and two strikes to Antel, the senior from Licking, Missouri. Brower kicks and deals on the one-two. That one hit to the right side, and that's through for a base hit in right field. Cole Williams gets the windmill. The throw back to the plate is cut off, and the Bobcats strike first here in Athens. A one-to-nothing lead thanks to an RBI single from Gideon Antle. And that's why you bunt earlier to get that guy in scoring position so that that uh, slightly weaker hit ground ball through the right side is able to score a run. Gideon Antle comes up again for the Bobcats. The fourth inning is the charm for the green and white. They have a one to nothing lead early now. And this brings us to Alex Finney, who looked to keep up the momentum with the runner on base. First pitch finds the inside of the zone for strike number one. But as we mentioned in the top part of the frame, an IU coached by Coach Copeland, Bobcats, they're coached by Coach Craig Moore, who spent eight years as an assistant, one year as the interim before becoming the full-time coach in spring of 2022. And one thing that he's done a great job of is developing MLB draft picks. Coach Moore has helped to train five players to get drafted in his time at OU, including Rudy Roten in 2018 and 2019, and then also, of course, Joe Rock very recently in the 2021 MLB draft. 0-1 is fouled off, count is 0-2. Yeah, one thing with the Bobcats recently with Craig Moore is that they've had a lot of big-time top-end talent. We're seeing Gideon Ansel right now. You mentioned Joe Rock. This is a team that, as you said, tends to have guys who are at the top very, very good. Yeah, especially when it comes down to Mid-American Conference talent, one of the most talented teams year in, year out, and what's a very competitive conference this season. We've already seen a couple of games go final from yesterday, and couple of matchups that have already been determined who's winning the series. Akron 5, Toledo 6. The Rockets with a nice series win to start things off. They win that series 3 to nothing. Kent State, they make a statement on the road in Mount Pleasant. 3 to 1 win over the Chippewas yesterday and a 17 to 2 win earlier today. The 0 2 is fouled backwards. Count remains the same 0 and 2. Uh, also, Eastern Michigan, the Eagles, they start off their slate 2 and 0 with a win over Ball State. They'll play their Game three later today. And then Bowling Green, they take down Miami 12-1. to And they are up in that series two games to none. With one more game here today, which I'm expecting a lot of snow, not only here in Athens, but all around the state. Brower fires on the 0-2. That one's lined over to the left side and down for a base hit. A one-out single for Alex Finney. It's become a hit parade for the Bobcats. After not being able to get really anything going early on in the game, leadoff hitter in Cole Williams gets hit by a pitch, comes all the way around to score, and Brower's losing it a little bit. Look to get back on track. He's a pitcher that Coach Copeland is very confident in. He knows how good he can be, especially when he was over there with Coach Copeland at the University of Illinois Springfield, a team that went 36-15 and last season, and he was one of the Top pitchers from there. First pitch popped high in the air by Jackson Cawthorn. And some room for NIU to make the catch. And Harper brings it down. Two on, two away in a one to nothing ball game in favor of the Bobcats. And this brings us to Paulie Mancino. Really big spot here for Mancino. Obviously not too many runs so far in this game. So if you can get another run, maybe even two across in this inning, you'll be feeling like you're in a good spot. Brower misses high and outside on his first pitch to Mancino. A 
player that gets to follow in the footsteps of his father, his dad, Paul Mancino. Also played collegiate baseball, competing at Northwestern, so a different school in Illinois. You know, NIU usually keeps Northwestern on the schedule quite a bit. It's the 1-0 breaking ball on the money for strike one. Mancino had an absolutely massive home run in the first game on Friday in the 10th inning out to right field. So definitely has pop. We've seen it so far in this series. Yeah, we've kind of seen that clutch factor too as he sees the breaking ball okay, but it was a little early on the swing, one ball and two strikes. He also had a home run against University of Illinois at Chicago in game two of that series. And that ended up being a huge home run as Mancino had a two-run bomb and then Ansel had the game winner in what was a tight 3-2 to two ball game. One-two pitch home, and that's popped foul to stay alive. Yeah, speaking of that clutch factor for the Bobcats, I mean, we've seen it with the Huskies, too. Looking at that first game, uh, Mason Kelly in the top of the ninth in a tie game hit a home run out to left field, and then in the bottom of the ninth, the Bobcats were able to answer on an error that allowed them to score a run, push it into extras, and then top of the 10th inning, uh, the Huskies scored a run. Bottom of the 10th, Mancino homered. One-two drilled in the air to the right side. Kapicki loses his hat, but doesn't lose the baseball to retire the side with two runners left in scoring position. However, the Bobcats get on the board. Gideon Antle, an RBI single, scoring Cole Williams. one to nothing Ohio as we head to the fifth. We've got some scoring here at Bob Wren Stadium. One to nothing lead for the Bobcats and NIU. They're looking to get a piece of the pie as well and get some runs on the board in this frame. And they'll have the 7, 8, 9 in the order. Kapicki, Parcel, and Nelson. Or Sapicki, rather, sorry. Had a fly out to right field the last time he was up, but did get some good contact. One thing interesting, Zach, especially with the snow falling down, from an outfielder's perspective, what do you think of this possibility of trying to make catches as we're going to try to see an example? No, it actually does drop for a base hit. It's a picky with a leadoff single for NIU. And maybe they do want a piece of that pie. Yeah, I mean, leadoff single, so threatening a little bit. But speaking about that outfield, uh, with the snow, maybe gets maybe whipping a little bit into your eyes. But I think the main thing is you're looking for line drives to be hit at you instead of high pop flies because with that wind, you never know where that ball is going to end up. So it's a lot easier if it's a line drive and you're a little more confident in, in where that ball is going to go. These high pop flies are going to be real tough catches, especially for the infielders. I mean, with a, having to move backwards to go catch the ball instead of maybe moving forward, have a little bit less time as an infielder. So anything hit high into the air is going to be trouble. Here's Charlie Parso up at the plate. He'll chase that one, and that goes foul on the tap. Parcell had a strikeout the last time he was up. That was in the third inning. But I want to mention, in that first game of the series, in the 11-inning thriller won by the Huskies 8-6, to six, Coach Copeland, he complimented the bottom of his order the most 
And there's a foul ball. This should be playable. And Smith makes the catch for out number one. But Coach Copeland mentioned how the bottom of the order, their production late in the game was the X factor. And between, in that game, Cone was batting in the seventh spot. But Cone, Parcell, and Nelson, they went seven for 14 with four RBI, accounting for half of the runs in the game. And when you get that from your seven, eight, nine, it's hard to lose a game. Yeah, now Charlie Parcell is a guy who used to hit leadoff for this team a little bit ago. He hit that freshman wall, as Coach Copeland described it, as there's a single out to right field. But he was a guy hitting leadoff, a guy who was having a lot of success early on in this season. So a guy they know can, can be a big contributor for this team. Dropped down to eight because they were starting lefties. He's still eight again, so we'll see if he moves back up in the order. But this is a guy that they know can produce, that they know is, is going to be able to get bad on ball, and he did that in that game. And then Jake Nelson, three for five had a great game four straight singles now for NIU if you remember the end of the fourth inning it was a single by Aaron Harper before he was put out on an 8-6-4 and here comes coach Tim Brown to talk with Gasky after giving up a couple of base hits so far today for Gasky four and one-third innings pitched does have a pair of strikeouts to his name on the day but has given up a fair share of hits with six but has not allowed any base runners to get to third base, at least technically. Yeah, it's been all singles for the Huskies. There was that blast out to left center field that Gideon Antle made a fantastic play on that you think could have been extra bases, but that's really about it. Um, they tried to stretch a single into a double in the last inning that you mentioned, but other than that, everything's been kept in front of the outfielders, uh, and it's just been station to station. Once a nothing lead for the Bobcats. They got on the board in the bottom of the fourth inning. Right now we're in the top of the fifth with two runners on for the Huskies in the nine-hole batter. We're in number nine, Jake Nelson up at the plate. Righty on lefty matchup. First pitch is outside. Count is one ball, no strikes. This is a very competitive series between Ohio and NIU as the Bobcats lead the series over the Huskies 28-26. Or rather, Arado is up at the plate, sorry. Two for two so far in this game, Eric Arado is. Uh, so speaking of those singles, this is the guy who can produce. 2-0 uh, count so far for him. See if he can make the most out of it. Next pitch, low and inside. So just to clarify, Nelson single to right field. Kapicki had the single earlier, and then it was Parcel who had the foul out to first base. That's a good bounce back pitch there from Gasky. Yeah, definitely. And you know Arado's going to be patient. We talked about this before. Definitely in a 3 0 count. Um, he probably has the green light. Not sure if he's going to use it in that kind of count. So maybe you can get something over the plate. This time forces a check swing out of Arato. Count is three balls and two strikes. For Arado today, off to a great start, two for two, as well as a stolen base to his name. Here's the payoff. Flared foul left side. So as I was mentioning, the Bobcats and Huskies, great series all time, 28 to 26 in favor of Ohio. Last year was a two to one series win for the Bobcats. Yeah, and you can see how close these two teams are just in this series so far this weekend. Uh, one game, as we mentioned, that went to 11. And that's hit to the left side, and that's a base hit. Here comes the picky, getting the wave around the pause for Jake Nelson. He stays at third, and it's an RBI double for Eric Arato. How about three for three and a tie for the Huskies? And there we go again. Eric Arato always going to have these professional at-bats. He's an unbelievable hitter. He's so great at the plate, has a great eye, and able to, to shoot that one into left field for a double. The Huskies with seven hits, and seven time is the charm to get their first run of the day. Also, was the charm for their first extra base hit of the day after six straight singles for their hits. Now they add a double, and we're all tied up with two runners in scoring position for Andre Dimitrov, or Dimitrov. And right now, a really dangerous part of the order with Dimitrov and Summerhill due up for Northern Illinois, this is where, if you're the Huskies, you have to take advantage here of this opportunity. 
Gasky looking to work out of this jam and does a good job on that breaking ball. Count is one ball, one strike. Looked like the approach right there for Demetrov was to pull that ball into left field. Uh, so maybe not uh, just settling for the one run. Normally in this kind of situation, guy on third less than two outs, you're just trying to push one in the air to right field to try and send him home. Demetrov thinks about showing bunt. The pitch misses, low and away, two balls and one strike. Bobcat infield definitely being aggressive, trying to stop that run from scoring. In a really low scoring game like that, every run counts a little bit more than it does in, say, you know, a 21-19 game. Yeah, infield pinched in right now for the Bobcats. Also very congested. There's a bloop over to right center field, and that ball is caught by Mancino. But here comes the tag up from Nelson. He scores, and each runner advances, and the Huskies have their first lead of the afternoon. And there it is, and that's really exactly what you're looking for um, in terms of hitting when you're when you got a guy on third and less than two outs, you want to see the ball a little bit farther into the plate. Lets you allow, uh, allows you to see what pitch it is, allows you to see where it's going to end up, makes you a little bit more confident. Then you just push it to right field in the air, get your guy home. So Nelson scores on the sack fly by Dimitrov. A Rato moves up to third. And then there's a walk intentionally to Colin Summerhill. As once again, the Bobcats, they have used this to completely shut down Summerhill. You know, you'd rather give up the one base on a walk than giving up multiple home runs because Summerhill going into the series, seven home runs, which put him at seventh in the nation. Yeah, Summerhill's 0 for 5, uh, or he was 0 for 5 on Friday. He's now 0 for 7 so far in this series, but he has walked now five times, Cedric. I mean, they're pitching around him. They're not going after him, and when they do go after him, he hasn't had too many big competitive at-bats, so maybe he's not quite in the rhythm that he normally is. Count is 0-1 to Kelly, who swings through that next pitch. Count is 0-2. Kelly struggled so far today. He's 0-2 from the plate. And the Bobcats trying to get out of this frame and minimize the damage. Gasky wind kicks and deals. And just misses outside. Runner goes. And a uh, little bit of hesitation on the base pass by Summerill, but eventually makes his way to second. And the count is one ball, two strikes. That was a delayed steal. I think um, with two outs and a guy on third, normally you're in a spot in college where if you throw it on the second, you're getting a little bit of a pickle between first and second, trying to allow the guy to score before you get out. That looked like it was exactly what uh, Summerhill was trying to do because he stopped in between first and second when that throw came. But the pitcher, Blake Gasky, threw his glove up and caught that ball, didn't allow it to happen. So pretty great um, job by both the catcher and the pitcher to not allow him to get in that pickle. But now if you get a hit for Mason Kelly, that'll score two runs. Yeah, Bobcats had five errors by the catcher throughout this season, so could be smart as the 1-2 hit over to the right side. Should stay in the field of play. Mancino makes the catch and retires the side, but not before the Huskies could get on the board. They respond to... The one run for the Bobcats by putting up two of their own. It was a Rato driving in to Picky, and then it was a sack fly by Dimitrol driving in and Nelson. Two to one Huskies as we head to the home half of the fifth.
Lights, camera, action. Here at Bob Wren Stadium, the offensive the offenses have arrived. One run for the Bobcats in the fourth, two runs in the fifth for NIU. And now Bobcats looking to answer in this home half of the fifth with the 7-8-9 in the order. A.J. Roush, Bryce Smith, and Nick Dolan. Roush puts a charge in the first pitch on the ground to the left side. Long throw and the stretch. And a play is made in time. Dimitrov with a nice throw. Kelly with a nice stretch. One up, one down. Good backhand there by the shortstop for NIU um, on Andre Demetral. That was not as routine a play as he made it look. Hit pretty hard, so he knew he had plenty of time after the backhand to make a throw to first. Took his time and made an accurate throw. Here's Bryce Smith back up at the plate. 0 for 1 on the day, but a, a player that started to figure things out and piece things together throughout the end of last weekend and into the midweek game against Youngstown State. Had no hits going into the UIC series and then came up with his first couple of the season. He'll take the next pitch breaking ball for a strike. But you love to see that where guys maybe have slow starts, but then it just clicks for them and they start to figure it out as the season goes on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Coach, Coach Moore told us that he now knows he's le leaned a little bit more into the kind of hitter he is. Uh, he's going to be an opposite field hitter. He's going to hit it up the middle. He's not as much of a pull guy, so taking advantage of that left field line down there. He had a double uh, in the series this past weekend. Brower kicks and deals on the 2-1. Breaking ball misses low and away. Smith's had a great college journey. He started at Bryant and Stratton College before going to Marymount and then found himself here at Ohio University. Of course, Marymount, that's a school in Arlington, Virginia, where he made 40 appearances. It's bat 293, 23 RBI, four home runs. So a very solid pickup as a graduate transfer for Coach Moore's squad. Here's the payoff from Brower. Breaking ball hit to the right side, and that's through for a base hit in right field. Lead off single for Bryce Smith. And the offenses continue to stay hot despite how cold it is outside. Yeah, they started pretty <laughs> cold. Not sure how they warmed up with the snow falling, but they sure have. Uh, Nick Dolan now due up 0 for 1 with the, with the strikeout looking in his last at bat, but trying to turn that around here. So a one out single for Bryce Smith, and here comes Nick Dolan. Brower kicks and fires and finds the inside part of the zone for a strike to Dolan. Player that went up in starts. He had 36 starts in 2022, moved up to 46 starts in 2023, the 226 average, and right now didn't get all the starts in the world in certain series this year, but kind of earned it. So he'll bomb that one over to left field. A Rato pushing back, and that ball hits off the wall. Extra bases here for Dolan. He works his way to second, and here comes the wave around. Bryce Smith, nope, he decides to pause, go back to third base, and Dolan will take the double. That's a heck of a shot by Dolan the entire time. I thought that one was going to leave the yard. Just hits off the base of the wall, but Bryce Smith uh, had a chance to score there based on you know how long that ball was in the air, but he had to stop for a little bit because he thought maybe that ball was going to be caught out there in left field. Uh, try, he turned, had a pretty aggressive turn at third, Looked like he was going to commit to going home, but definitely I think would have been out by a, by a solid margin. Nevertheless, Bobcats in a good situation now with two runners in scoring position. Brower's got himself in a jam for the second time in two innings after retiring the first nine Bobcat batters in the order to start the first three innings of the game. And now in the fourth and fifth, dealing with a little bit more adversity as the arm starts to get a little bit tired. And this brings us to Cole Williams hitting in the leadoff spot for the Bobcats on the game. Has a big chance here. Pops up the 1-0. This should be playable in foul territory for Harper. And he makes the catch. Been a lot of close plays um, in foul territory with, with players, infielders especially, catching the ball behind their head, reaching back to have to catch it. Not as routine as you normally see it because of this win, but um, no, none of them have dropped so far. Everyone's made it, Everyone's done a pretty good job making sure that they, they make the catch. That's a tough um, 
you know, at bat right there for, for Cole Williams. Guy on, guy on third, less than two outs. You want to get that run across to tie this game back up, but just fouls out. Nelson takes the first pitch, breaking ball outside for a ball. Nelson, a freshman from Vernon Hills, Illinois, going against a team from his home state. Got two runners in scoring position as the snow falls. The 1-0 plunks off of Nelson. And he'll take first base to load the bases. Here we go, Cedric. Gideon Antle walking to the plate. Bases are loaded. And there's two outs. So a single will score two. Anything else could score three or potentially four with the way Gideon Antle's played. And it looks like NIU wants to talk to their pitcher before this at bat. Yeah, I think that's a good time to do that. If you are the NIU coaching staff, what are you saying right now to Adam Brower? Uh, probably just running back through the scouting report, I would say, on Gideon Antle, just making sure your guy's confident in what he's going to throw in the pitch mix that he's going to use, making sure your catcher knows what's going to come. Um, it's big time that, that you settle him down. I don't think you're telling him to do anything different than what he would normally do, but just make sure he's settled down, make sure he knows what he's going to do and he's confident in what he's going to do. Husky's got a great staff. A lot of guys in their first years at the helm at NIU, but Ryan Copeland, he's the head coach. You also have John Kelch, who's in his year one as one of the lead assistant coaches. Calvin Peacock and Brandon Bannon are the four coaches. As What turned from a light flurries is starting to become a bit of a blizzard. It is really snowing outside right now. Here's Gideon Anto at the plate. Puts one on the ground to the left side. Diving play by Harper. The throw is in time to first base. What a play by Aaron Harper to strand three on the base pass, and the Bobcats can't believe it. Adam Brower gets through five innings, and the Huskies keep their lead as we head to the sixth here at Bob Wren Stadium. Huskies lead 2-1 to one over the Bobcats, and they almost gave it up. But to the Huskies' credit, a great defensive play by Aaron Harper protects the lead as the Bobcats, they bring in a new pitcher on the mound. The first pitch sails upstairs on the fastball for ball number one. It's Zach Weber pitching against Cooper Cohn. You'll also see Aaron Harper and C.J. Sapicki in this frame. 1-0 this time finds the zone for the first strike of the day. For Zach Weber, the six foot two junior from Lebanon, Ohio, a righty. Misses outside that time, two balls, one strike. 
just 76 pitches for Gasky. Uh, he did go five innings, so a good out, a really good outing for a starting pitcher. Five innings, only allowing two earned runs. Obviously, the Bobcats have had a lot of trouble uh, recently in this season with their starting pitching, especially early on in the game. They've gotten down a lot early. Uh, we've talked a lot about the 21-19 game against Youngstown State. They went down 13-1 to after three innings, after the top half of three innings. They ended up scoring 10 runs in the bottom half. But pitching early on in these games has been a big struggle. Uh, Coach Craig Moore said that he's got to get his guys ready to pitch from the first pitch. They don't. You can't take five, six, seven pitches to get in tune with the game. You got to be ready from the first pitch, or else those kinds of things are going to happen. Leadoff walk for the freshman catcher uh, playing DH though today, Cooper Cone, and he's aboard for the second time today. He had a single the last time he was up. And this brings in Aaron Harper. By the way, Blake Gasky finished his day with his second best start of the season. Five innings pitch, seven hits, two earned runs, one walk, and two strikeouts. First pitch. Finds a zone for strike number one to Aaron Harper. Before Weber, the last time that he had an appearance came against the University of Illinois at Chicago about eight days ago in the second game of that doubleheader. Harper Chops that one to J.R. Nelson. Throw down a second base for one. The relay back to first. Is it time for a double play? Great job there by the Bobcats. That one, a little bit of a bouncing ball to the shortstop. J.R. Nelson able to play on a hop, get it over to second quickly, and they're able to turn two. So just like that, some wind behind your sails. If you are Zach Weber as a son, maybe starting to peak a little bit here at Bob Wren Stadium. But Weber in his last appearance, four innings pitched. He's on the money for strike number one to Sapicki. And he earned the win in that game, only giving up one run, and it wasn't even an earned run, striking out four against that very talented University of Illinois at Chicago team. And it was a much-needed win for Ohio. That was a streak where in the span of seven games, they lost six of them. But the lone win was that matchup against UIC, and Weber was a big reason why the Bobcats came up on top. Yeah, I wanted to go back to, to looking at that starting pitching. We mentioned, uh, you mentioned how good Weber was in, the, in their win, but in those losses, it's been uh, tough starting pitching. But so far this series, uh, Jacob Tate went five innings, gave up four hits, allowed only four earned runs, pretty solid outing in the first game, and then five innings uh, in the second game for Dylan Masters with no earned runs. Chalk up the first K of the day for Zach Weber. A very quick top of the sixth inning, and the Bobcats will look to eat into this deficit or take the lead when we come back for the bottom of the sixth inning.
So each of the starters go five today. Adam Brower finishes with five innings pitched, four hits, one earned run, no walks, and four strikeouts. An excellent start for Brower, and that sets things up for Jackson Stewart, who deals with the heart of the order for the Bobcats, the 4-5-6, Alex Finney, Jackson Cawthorn, and Paulie Mancino in a 2-1 ball game led by NIU alongside Zach Mother's Ball. My name is Cedric Granger. Happy to have you joining us on this Sunday where we're starting to see a little bit of blue sky peaking after a lot of snow through the first five and some change. One thing you're noticing early here from Stewart, very pronounced breaking ball. He's got an 87 mile per hour fastball, 70 to 72 and a half curveball, 79 to 80 slider. That one hit to the left side. The chopper goes to Harper. And that one takes one hop into the glove of Mason Kelly for out number one. Good pick there at first base by Mason Kelly. But, yeah, you're talking about that breaking ball, and Alex Finney gets on top of it, rolls it over to the third baseman for the first out of the inning. And Stewart completes his four-pitch mix as well with a changeup. So we got the fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. We saw a lot of the curveball early on in the count. He'll deliver the first pitch, curveball for strike number one to Jackson Cawthorn. So kind of switching things up here. Still a righty pitcher. Also has a lot of experience. Six foot three senior. And played a lot of his days at Des Moines Area Community College in Iowa. Originally from Iowa himself. It's a 1-1 swung through and missed for strike number two by Cawthorn. Working very fast so far this inning. Throwing strikes early in the count and not taking too many time, too much time between pitches. This time know. Cawthorn. Gets a hold of that breaking ball, but won't go too far. And a nice catch by Dimitrov as he almost lost his balance. I didn't even see that ball when it was popped up into the air. Good job by shortstop for NIU, Dimitrov, to make that play. So a quick two up, two down. Each of these relief pitchers coming in red hot. But we were talking about this with how good of a start it was for Gasky. How important it is for NIU to get a great start like that from Brower. Five innings pitched, and this time keeping the runs down as there's a bunt laid down the third base side, and Harper can't glove it. He's actually trying to barehand it that time. But the hop did not bounce high enough. There's an infielder, infield single, I should say, for Mancino on the bunt. Yeah, I wonder... Uh how different it is for, for these guys to be playing on a turf infield. Maybe a little more bouncy. Maybe you're trying to expect a little bit more of a, of a hop. But that was going to be a tough play regardless, even if he was able to barehand that cleanly. He was going to throw it across his body on the run on a dead sprint toward home. Here comes the outfielder, A.J. Roush. That one gets away from Summerhill. And heads up base running. Gives Mancino a second base back. And there you go, just a bunt single. Now he's already on second in scoring position for A.J. Roush. Two away, one on, and Mancino at second base. And the new pitcher, Stewart, winds and deals. 1-0 slides to the outside, and the count is one ball and one strike. You can see how the horizontal movement got A.J. Roush to tap it. It looks like they say it's fair. I am shocked at that one, Zach. Do you know what, what happened? cue shot right there from A.J. Roush. It was spinning back toward the infield, and obviously if the ball goes foul but comes back into fair play without hitting anything in foul territory, that means it's a fair ball. I was paying attention to that ball. It hit that Nicholson family um, sign right there on the dirt, but it, a cue shot that rolled back in fair tapped the first base back, so that was a fair ball. An unbelievably heads-up play there by Mason Kelly. Paying attention to that ball, he didn't field it in foul territory. He let it roll back fair and was able to get the out. High baseball IQ moment there by Mason Kelly. And NIU gets out of the inning with a runner left in scoring position. Six innings up, six inning down. And here we go, the final three chapters of the rubber match between Ohio and NIU. Stay with us on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Game three of the series between Ohio and NIU. Not a lot of breathing room between these two teams. Two to one lead for the Huskies, but NIU, they're going to look to add some insurance, build on their lead a little bit. They'll have the 8 9 1 in the order to do it. Charlie Parcell, Jake Nelson, and Eric Arato, who's been the hottest batter of this game so far, all due up in the frame. So it could be huge if Parcell or Nelson can find their way on the base pass. First pitch misses outside from Zach Weber, who's starting his second inning of work. So far, so good in his first inning, forcing a ground ball into a double play. This one on the ground over to the second baseman, Finney, like clockwork. That one actually came pretty hot off the bat of Charlie Parcell, but right to the second baseman, Alex Finney, so able to make that play. This takes us to Jake Nelson. Nelson, one for two on the day, has gotten on the base pass, has also scored a run. Peel says that's ball number one. Nelson started off his career at Madison College, where he had 395 with 37 ribbies and 10 stolen bases in 2022. Then moving over to NIU last year, 34 games played, including 31 starts at second base, batting 257. So solid part of this rotation for the Huskies. Or I should say rotation of batters that they use. Also holds some school records. He holds out Tuna High School's record for career hits as an all-time or a two-time all-state selection. Pretty impressive, though, when you look through a lot of these players. A lot of them, of course, made huge impacts at their respective high schools, respective travel ball leagues. And a lot of them, they hold records. And you can still see their name all over the place at their high schools. And that's what happened at the D1 level. A lot of these guys were fantastic players in high school. 2-2 Two -two stays in the field of play. The third baseman, Dolan, overshoots that one. Smith trying to track that one down. Nelson pushing towards second. And there is no throw to the second base bag. Throwing error by the Bobcats, their 22nd error of the season. I know Coach Moore will not be happy about that one. Yeah, that was going to be a tough play the entire time, super close at first, but rushed right there by Nick Dolan, and that sidearm throw went wide. So some of the errors this year have been on throwing errors. Some of them have been on pickoff errors, and the Bobcats will continue to rep out just playing catch to help limiting these errors. That's something they practice every single day, according to Coach Moore. We're back at the top of the order with who's been the player of the game so far for NIU, Eric Arato, who's three for three with an RBI. Weber kicks and deals and finds the outside part of the zone, trying to tap into what helped make Gasky successful, which was attacking the edges of the zones. And even though NIU did get a couple of hits, they did not get as many runs as right now. The Bobcats are being out hit 8-5. to five. However, the difference on the scoreboard is only 2-1. to one. Yeah, and when you work outside of the zone on the corner, uh, those hits that do come from that end up being a little bit weaker hit. Normally singles, um, there was a double for Eric Arado, but it was just a flare down that left field line, not hit hard into a gap or anything. So that's what tends to happen. But Eric Arado, as you mentioned, three for three, he's the kind of guy that can take advantage of that. If you're working outside on him, he's the kind of guy who can go inside out and push one to left field. Arado likes playing the Ohio Bobcats as he had his first two RBI of his career against the Ohio Bobcats way back in April of 2021. So he's had some good memories against the Bobcats. I think today's game will go up there as well as one of his best performances. Another player from Wisconsin. Bordering state to Illinois, the 3-2. Rug him up! Called strike three. Zach Weber. Sits down Eric Arado for the first time today. Yeah, we saw uh, Gasky have a lot of trouble with him, but obviously seeing a different arm, different guy in Zach Weber, and that one called strike three. So a backwards K for the second strike out of the day for Zach Weber. And this brings us to Andre Dimitrov. He's got a runner in scoring position with two away. Takes a look at that first pitch that Looked inside, then peeled down low of the zone for ball number one.
Dimitrov had a sacrifice fly the last time he was up. And that gave NIU their first lead of the game. The Bobcats, they took the lead 1-0 in the fourth. And then NIU struck back with two runs of their own in the fifth. There's been no scoring since then. So right now in the top of the seventh, but the Huskies with a runner in scoring position want to try to pad out this lead if they can get the opportunity to. Yeah, this series has been a lot of scoring and then the other team responding to that scoring. Um, as you mentioned, OU in the bottom of the fourth put up one run and then the Huskies answered with two runs as Demetrol gets nailed there in the back. So a free pass for NIU puts two runners aboard. That now here comes a decision, yeah. Yeah, the always dangerous Colin Summerhill. Uh, he wanted to try and get through Demetrol. Demetrol, um, a very good hitter, but no one on this NIU team is really close to, to where Colin Summerhill has been this season. So a decision here for Coach Craig Moore. And it looks like Weber will face Colin Summerhill, player that played in the Northwoods League where I broadcast it this past summer, and I saw him a lot. He was a member of the Traverse City Pittsfitters, where he's been a 300 batter in two seasons. Northwoods League, it teaches you how to grind 72 games in 80 days over there. But the players that go through that league, you really develop yourself well for college baseball. And Summerhill's seen it pay off. The 1-0 is upstairs. Counts two balls and no strikes. Also got some family ties for Colin. His father, Michael, played baseball at Ohio State. And his brother, Brendan, plays at Arizona. 2-0 breaking ball is ball number three. It looks like right now Weber trying to stay away from the zone. Yeah, we'll see if he attacks him here. I don't see him trying to go in the middle of the zone against Summerhill, but uh, a walk here still. I mean, Mason Kelly's a guy we mentioned before, came into the two today hitting over 300. So you don't want to have him with the bases loaded in two outs in this game, even though you don't want to face Summerhill very much. Uh, 576 slugging for Mason Kelly. This is a guy who has seven doubles. He has three home runs so far on this season. Three balls, one strike, two on, two away in a two-to-one ball game led by NIU. Weber pitching the Summerhill. And there's strike two to run the count full. Here comes the biggest pitch of the game so far. Three balls, two strikes, two away. Pay off to Summerhill. Runners go, and there's a walk. Second walk of the day for Summerhill, and that loads the bases for the black and red. And here he is, Mason Kelly, bases loaded, two outs. 0 for 3 so far on this ball game, but 1 for 4 getting a hit here can really turn this one around. Here comes Coach Brown to have a conversation with Zach Weber. As the snow continues to fall, the wind speed's picking up. And wind's starting to swirl a little bit, too. And it looks like there will be a pitching change as Weber finishes his day with an inning and two-thirds pitch. When we come back, new pitcher for the Bobcats. Two-to-one Huskies on Ohio Bobcat TV.
So Zach Weber goes one and two-thirds innings. This brings in Tyler Peck to the fray for the Bobcats. Inherits three runners on the base pass. A little bit of a jam, but two away in the frame. And his first pitch slider is on the money. With Tyler Peck, you'll see the fastball at 88, curveball 72 to 75, slider 74 to 76, and a changeup 80 to 82. As the 0-1, bloop to the right side, and that's down for a base hit. Here comes Nelson. He scores. Demetral right behind him. He scores as well. Make it a two RBI single for Mason Kelly. And the Huskies increase their lead to four to one. Fantastic job there from Mason Kelly. I think that one came off the end of the bat, but he had enough strength to push it over the infield into the outfield. And that one allowed two runs to score, of course, because it was a bit of a bloop shot into right field. And now there's a runner on third. Uh, Peck, a guy who went four innings, only allowed three hits and one earned run in the second game of the doubleheader on Friday. But quick hit here and two runs score, and those will both be on Weber. Here's Cooper Cohn up at the plate. The first pitch on the money for strike number one. Runners on the corners for the Huskies. They can continue to add to their lead, looking for a series win. A team that just won five games out of the 30 in conference last year. And now a huge opportunity to take care of business. You got to wonder how much those early tests for this NIU team have paid off so far in this series. Like you mentioned, not a team that was winning too many series in conference last year. Looking in a good spot to win their first one here. But that's, you know, you play Abilene Christian, you play LSU. Maybe it gets you in a spot where you feel a lot better going into a series against uh, the Bobcats. It really is. I mean, you schedule yourself difficult non-conference matchups to benefit you in conference play. The 1-2. That one is bopped in the air over to shallow right center field. Mancino makes the call, makes the catch, and retires the side. But not before the NIU Huskies. They tack on two. Mason Kelly comes up huge, scoring Dimitrov and Nelson. And now the Bobcats have their work cut out for them as we go to the home half of the seventh. Time to stand up and stretch. You're watching Ohio Bobcat TV. Welcome back to Bob Wren Stadium. Zach Mothersball here alongside Cedric Granger getting ready for the bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, Bobcats have the 8-9-1 in the order to get things started. Bryce Smith, Nick Dolan, and Cole Williams with unfamiliar territory. This is the biggest deficit the Bobcats have dealt with so far in this game. And right now, as it stands, this score mirrors that of game two of the series for the Cats. They won it 4-1, to one, and now this time they find themselves down 4-1 to one against the Huskies. And NIU, they're trying to make it two straight seasons where they take game three of the series. As NIU, they were all over the Bobcats last year, 11-1 to one in game three of that series. Bryce Smith trying to help the Bobcats claw out of this. The elevated pitch finds a zone for strike number two. Count runs full to Smith. 
Smith is one for two on the day. And now reaches base for the second time this afternoon with a walk. Good way to start off that inning. Like you mentioned, down three runs now after two came across in the top of the seventh, but a leadoff walk puts you in good position. That's just the first walk of the day for NIU, a team that has walked 98 batters this season to 100 strikeouts. Some pretty impressive work today, 4-1, to one, as that nasty breaking ball gets Dolan the swing through it. Count is 0-1. Yeah, this Bobcat team isn't one that walks too terribly often, and of course we saw Brower come out with you know multiple first pitch strikes and a lot of aggression from him early on in this game. So, yeah, not too many balls at all. Not too many walks, as you mentioned, but not too many balls thrown. Back-to-back -back breaking balls for Stewart. Gets Dolan down in the count. He's one for two with a double earlier in this game. This time he does see the breaking ball, but pops that one in the air. And Mason Kelly communicates well for out number one. If you're the Bobcats, you really wanted to see Dolan try and get on right there. Um, had a little bit of a tough time against those breaking balls. Wasn't seeing it too well. That was a pretty late swing from him. A little bit of an emergency swing that popped it out to the first baseman. But if you could, if you could have gotten two guys with the top of the order coming up, they'd have been in great position. Still in fairly solid position because of the leadoff walk. First pitch, another breaking ball that finds the outside part of the zone. Look at Stewart now. Finding the zone with curveballs and sliders. And when you can do that, if you can throw multiple pitches for strikes, it makes you very dangerous in this league. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Curveball that time for strike two. Yeah, he hasn't put too much heat on anything so far, but like you mentioned, Bobcats just aren't seeing it. So might as well just keep going back to it. We'll see if he goes back to the well for the third time in this plate appearance. This time the breaking ball popped over to no man's land in left center field. The diving catch is dropped by Dimitrov. Bryce Smith did get caught, though, as he made his way to second. Great job by Arato to throw it down to Jake Nelson at second base to make sure that one out could be secured on the force. However, Cole Williams is on at first base. What yeah. a play defensively by NIU to back up your guy as Dimitrov. He laid out for everything on that one. We mentioned it for Mason Kelly a little bit ago with that cue shot that came back in fair territory, but just keeping heads up baseball, knowing where guys are, knowing the situations, and Arado knew that because that ball was popped up and uh, you didn't know if it was going to be caught or not, that he was going to have a chance to come up firing and get the out at second. He did just that. So Williams is on. Bryce Smith is out on the – of course, you know, you see this all the time, the 9-4 force out. And the next pitch, breaking ball upstairs to J.R. Nelson, player that has been active today. He has not recorded a hit technically, but does have a sack bunt and a hit by pitch. So he has made some things happen as the pickoff attempt is not in time. Two away, one on, and a four to one ball game in this rubber match. NIU trying to take this series on the road. This is a Huskies team that was picked to finish 10th in the MAC, as there's a ball that's hit to left field. And no problem for Eric Arato and another scoreless inning for NIU, their sixth one of the game. We're headed to the eighth inning where the Huskies look to build on this lead some more. You're watching Ohio Bobcat TV.
top of the eighth inning, and the Huskies trying to get one step closer to a series victory in the opening series of the Mid-American Conference slate. Got a long road ahead of us, spanning all the way to May, and it's going to be a marathon with a couple of midweek series and, of course, a weekend series in non-conference for each team throughout this regular season. It'll be Aaron Harper, C.J. Sapicki, and Charlie Parcell all due up in this inning against Tyler Peck. But to that point, it's kind of interesting, Zach, when you have an 11-team league or an 11-team league because you're always going to have one team that's going to play non-conference while the rest of the teams will have conference series when it comes to these weekend matchups. So this week, Western Michigan is the odd one out. They have played uh, Virginia Commonwealth University and Michigan State University uh, this weekend. Instead, Ohio, they'll take on Virginia Tech later this season on a weekend series when it's their off week and conference play. It's always interesting when you have an odd amount of teams. Yeah, it gives you a chance to A, challenge yourself with a couple of the higher quality teams out there to get some young guys some, some time in you know high-pressure situations against really good players, top-of-the-line players. We saw that with NIU playing LSU earlier this season. But it also gives you a chance to try different things. Maybe certain bullpen guys that maybe you think maybe they could get a couple of starts under their belt. Maybe they can go a little bit longer than they, you normally let them go in conference games, in the games that you know are big time and really matter for you. But in the non-conference games, try a couple of things, try different lineups, try guys in different positions potentially to see how things work out. Here's C.J. Sapicki up at the plate after Aaron Harper walks. So one aboard, nobody out in a 4-1 to lead for NIU. As we look at the conference standings, I did talk about how some of the scores from yesterday were pretty interesting. A lot of teams getting the leg up on their opponents going into last night. Toledo, they were there in first place, 2-0. and They're now 3-0 and in conference play after picking up another win against Akron. So they're sitting up top. Bowling Green undefeated in conference play, 4-7, and 2-0, looking to get to 3-0 here today. Eastern Michigan, 4-9, and they're 2-0, and or check that, 5-9 and now, 2-0 and in conference play. NIU, they're a team that's played a lot of games. I mean, you look at the rest of the MAC, most teams are around, you know, 14 games played. Aside from Central Michigan, NIU has played the most games, 4-11, and they're 1-1, one and one. Ohio, Five and seven, one and one. These two teams trying to break their tie in conference today. As we see a couple more pickoff attempts from Tyler Peck. You got Western Michigan. They're in the middle, seven and seven, and zero and zero in conference. They've yet to play a conference game. Uh, and then you have Kent State, who's really struggled to start off the conference late, zero and three in league play after being swept by Central Michigan. Chippewas up to six and thirteen after. Uh, once again, like I said, a 3-0 series win and a 17-2 win, which is pretty impressive. It looks like we'll have a timeout called by Northern Illinois to get things settled. But it's sure to be a really interesting conference slate this whole year in the Mid-American Conference. Of course, the projected team to beat is Kent State, and they proved it already with a nice win on the road at Mount Pleasant. That's where the Bobcats face next for their next weekend series. But before that, each of these teams, like we said, playing non-conference games to show different lineups, maybe get a chance to throw some bullpen guys. Well, the Bobcats, they get to play Moorhead State coming up on Tuesday, while Purdue is going to take on Northern Illinois. That game's actually going to be uh, in West Lafayette, so Northern Illinois is continuing on the road to take on Purdue, uh, and that's going to be coming up Wednesday before they take on Akron on a road series. For the Huskies, I mean... It doesn't get more brutal than this, Zach. You have to go on the road from when the season begins, February 16th, all the way till March 22nd. My goodness. And that's a lot of traveling and a lot of four-game series. This team's going to be, um, you know, a little bit tired, I think, going into that late game, into that late schedule. But once you get back home, maybe they can relax a little bit. I really do like those those Tuesday games. I know it makes a couple of pitchers throw some more and. I talked about how they're going to be able to, to try new things, to get different things going on. But I think the Tuesday games are even more important for, you know, if you if the Bobcats end up losing this game 4-1, to one, uh, can't come back and, and take the lead, and they have a Tuesday game to get that momentum going before they play an incredibly tough Kent State team. So they don't have to go from this loss in this series straight to the Kent State series next weekend. They get a little game in between that to try and get their momentum back. Count is one ball and two strikes to C.J. Sapicki with one on. Pickoff attempt, not in time. Tyler Peck really, really wants to get this pickoff at first. He does not like Aaron Harper being there. 
Sapecki, who's up at the plate, he started off his career in the SEC with Missouri in 2021, starting 10 games before transferring. The 1-2 is inside to even up the count. He registered two RBI and two stolen bases for the Tigers. And then entered the transfer portal, played at Jefferson College in Missouri, where he bat 257, driving in 25 as he scorches that one. Deep over to left field. It could go. It might go. It does go. What a blast from Sapicki. That was an unbelievable job to go down and in to get that one, dig it out, and send it over that left field wall. The first home run of the season for C.J. Sapicki. And the NIU Huskies have a five-run cushion here in Athens. That ball was blasted. Yeah, that felt like it was going right off the bat, Cedric. Unbelievable job. Great pop on that one. Sapicki, first extra base hit of this entire season was hitting 167 up until our to come into today. But a home run there will we'll jump his slugging up a little bit. Great job. So here comes Charlie Parcell looking to keep up the energy for NIU. Certainly got some kinetic energy coming off the bat right now. The 0-2 over to the right side, and that's down for a base hit in right field. Charlie Parcell looking for extra bases, then puts on the brakes real quick, gets back to first base, and then that throw goes awry. Parcell may have his extra bases after all. He slides in the second. And NIU gets another runner in scoring position. And we talked earlier uh, about how Coach Copeland was excited about the bottom of his lineup uh, in the first game on Friday. Now Sapicki hitting in the seven hole has that two-run shot that we just saw. Parcell now has a single. He's one for four. Jake Nelson's two for three at the plate right now with two singles. He's also scored two runs. Jake Nelson has. So um, they're doing a great job again at the bottom of the lineup getting a lot of production out of these seven, eight, and nine hole hitters. So a single plus error. And right now, the Bobcats find themselves in a little bit of a struggle. They'll have a pitching change coming up here in Athens, Ohio. Bobcats in trouble as the Huskies look to finish them off. NIU 6, Ohio 1 here in the 8th. New pitcher into the fray for the Bobcats. It's Hudson Bonkel, the junior right-handed pitcher. Stands at six foot three. And it's from Corona, California. Speaking of Corona, the sun, which of course the outside of the sun is called a Corona, is starting to peek through a little bit. But the thing that's really been shining brightest has been the NIU bats as of lately. Here's Nelson up at the plate, shows bunt. And the count's even one ball and one strike. 
see if Nelson sticks to that bunting approach, if that's what Coach Copeland wants, get another guy into scoring position to see if you can pad the lead by one more run this inning. Yeah, especially with nobody out in the frame. You could just move some guys around. That's huge. A well-placed bunt goes over to Bonkel. will take his one at first base. But job well done by Nelson to push Parcell into prime scoring position for the Dogs. That's exactly what you're looking for there from Jake Nelson. I know a lot of people look at bunting as a, um, you know, a given when they come up there. But it's a really tough thing to do. You want to, when you have a guy on second, you want to push the bunt to the left side to try and force that third baseman to have to make a play on the ball so that the guy on second going to third can't get thrown out. Pitcher made a play on the ball, but it was soft enough that there was plenty of time to get to third. Breaking ball misses low and away, or say high and away. One ball and no strikes to Eric Erato. Been very effective today. This was Pokemon. He'd be super effective. Ball on the ground to the left side. Dolan fields it. The throw down to home plate. Cawthorn makes the tag. So does retire Parcell. However, Arato's on for the fourth time today. Yeah, it looked like Parcell was running all the way. You don't see that too terribly often, especially when you're up, you know, five runs in a game. I'm shocked that they had him, that they were sending Parcell on contact. Normally you see a ground ball to the third base when you get back to the bag, but uh, they were trying to get that run across, and it didn't work out right there. So Arato on. I believe they've called a fielder's choice, but we'll see how it's officially scored. This brings on Dimitrov. Looks like the first pitch slider for strike number one. Yeah, it was an interesting decision that time from NIU to run for it at that point, but Dolan did a good job not – Having any sort of, what is this, what's the word I'm looking for? I almost forgot about it. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. But either way, it's a stolen base for a Rato. Hesitation, there we go. <laughs> I was hesitating myself while thinking about the word hesitation. Isn't that funny? Second steal of the game there for a Rato. A little bit of a double clutch behind the plate there from Jackson Cawthron. Another breaking ball in the zone for strike number two. But yeah, Rato now has got himself two stolen bags today. Good job getting himself in scoring position. Now early in this game, obviously, there was a little more offensive struggle, so they were pushing to score runs a little bit more as he's going to take third here. Yeah, Cawthorn looking for the ball, and Rato will say thank you very much, swiping the third base back to get into an even better position now. Two balls, two strikes to Dimitrov, who's already got an RBI to his name with a sacrifice fly. He gave the Huskies the lead back in the fifth inning. A lead that they have not given up. Bonkel tries to get out of the frame. 2-2. Two, two, and the count runs full. Three balls and two strikes. Dimitrov's also scored a run today. He scored in the seventh inning. So the Huskies, they've had three innings where they put up two runs apiece. The fifth, seventh, and eighth. Payoff. Flair to the right side. May have a chance to stay in the field of play and just foul. Foul by just maybe eight inches to a foot. It was close. Paulie Mancino actually got a lot closer to that one than I thought he would off the bat. I didn't think there was going to be any chance of a play over there, but he was close, ended up uh, overrunning that into the wall, of course, but just couldn't get there in time. Yeah, Mancino with some serious speed in right field. Runner 90 feet away as Bonkle deals the 3-2, and that's fouled right side. Demetrol seeing these one, these pitches a little bit deeper uh, into the plate as he fouled both these off to the right side. So we'll see if uh, he wants to go a little bit slower here. Hudson Bonkel does. Demetrol stays alive on the 3-2. And we'll do the count again. He's got some family ties as well. His father, Chris, played baseball at Mac Rival Western Michigan. So I always find it interesting when players decide to go to school at a different school than their parents, especially when it's a rival school too. Here's the payoff. Fastball misses low and away, and there's a walk. It's interesting how the game has changed as you can split this game into these four-inning parts. The first four innings, very low scoring. The pitching for Ohio, they were very consistent. There were no walks. And you got to give credit to Gasky for the solid start. However, in these last four frames, things have started to turn around in favor of the NIU bats, they figured things out a little bit once they've driven Gasky out of the game. And now here comes Colin Summerhill looking for his first hit of the game. 
this is the first time they've had to use more than three pitchers. Uh, in the first game on Friday, they used three pitchers. Or, yeah, they, they're using four today. They used three pitchers in the first game on Friday and just two pitchers in the second game on Friday. So forcing a little bit more out of the bullpen. Maybe they're a little less tired than normally they would be having to use so little bullpen arms. Runners on the corners. And the count's one ball and no strikes. Eric Arado right now is at third. Andre Dimitrov is at first for NIU looking to just add some more insurance and pad out that lead, put, ease the pressure off of their pitchers a little bit in the eighth and ninth inning as they try to close out this game. Summerhill's still looking for his first hit of the series, but he has walked six times, so he's plenty used to the base pass. Two of those were intentional. This player that's really had some monster series against Ohio in his career as well. If we look at what he did last year, 8 for 13 at the plate, including a 5-RBI game against the Cats in Game 3 of the series. So it goes to show that I think the Bobcats and Craig Moore, they remember him from last year. And they come in with the approach, hey, we're not going to try to let them beat us in this series. But to NIU's credit, there have been other players that have really stepped up. And this is why they find themselves up 6-1 to one on a day where they have registered 11 base hits. Yeah, Colin Summerhill, a guy who nearly committed to Ohio University to play baseball, but uh, they brought a couple catchers back after the COVID year, one of those likely being Mason Minzy, who kind of kept Colin Summerhill in a spot where he knew he wasn't going to get too much playing time, so he committed to a different school, and it's worked out very well here for, for him at NIU. Yeah, Huskies team trending in the right direction. They finished last last year, projected 10th this year, but would this be a statement on the road? 3-1 breaking balls upstairs. And that's the third walk of the day for Colin Summerhill. Same spot we were in that last inning for Mason Kelly. Bases loaded, two outs. See what he can do. Yeah, last time he did that, a two RBI single scoring Nelson and Demetraw to really open up this game. At that point, it was a two to one, very tightly contested game. See a lot of breaking stuff right now from Hudson Bonkel, who's had some starts as a pitcher in his Ohio career. He had a start last year against Akron, where he pitched six scoreless innings. 1-0 is up and away for ball number two. Already falling behind Mason Kelly here too well. You obviously have to go after him. There's no more room left on the base pass for a walk. 2-0 home. Kelly a little bit early there. So it seems like Kelly is going to be aggressive. That was quite a big swing at that one. Kelly's a player who played in eight games at Schoolcraft College before coming over to NIU. I love learning about all the different colleges around the junior college ranks and D3, D2, D1. It's really impressive, all these different places where you can play baseball, and it's great for getting reps, 3-1. And there's strike two on the fastball. But a lot of these guys, you have that choice where you can, if you're not good enough necessarily to play as a freshman at a Division I school, it can oftentimes be better to play at a junior college where you get all the at-bats. Runners all go 3-2, chopped on the ground to the shortstop. Nelson, it's out of his glove, throws down to first base, and is in time. Some solid composure by J.R. Nelson to strand three on the base pass. However, NIU, they do some damage in the eighth, 6-1 as we head to the home half of the eighth inning at Bob Rent Stadium. You're watching Ohio Bobcat TV.
Bottom of the eighth inning at Bob Wren Stadium and time running out for Ohio like an hourglass with the sand falling down. Gideon Ansel, Alex Finney, and Jackson Cawthorn have to make something happen for the green and white. Jackson Stewart, though, has other plans. What's been a solid relief outing for him so far? Two scoreless innings, and this time his breaking ball gets Anil to swing and miss on that one. One ball, one strike. A nice pitch from Stewart, who utilized curveballs and sliders to perfection in the last frame. 1-1. One, one. Bunt on the ground to the third base side, and there's no play at all for Aaron Harper, but they do call it foul. Wow, that was very close to staying in as. Looks like it's Christian yeah. Seegers now at third base. Um, good job by Seegers. It was a good idea right there to, to let that one go foul. As you said, there wasn't really going to be a play if he had picked that one up. So he made sure when it went foul, he, he poked it a little bit to make sure that it, uh, the ump knew that it was going to be called foul. Um, Angel, uh, interesting idea to drop the bunt there. Obviously, this is a guy with a lot of pop, but when you're down six runs in the eighth inning, you're not looking for solo home runs. You're looking for guys to get on base uh, and a lot of runs to score in one inning. So it's a good idea to, to try and get a bunt down. That was nearly a perfect bunt right there to get him on first base and lead this inning off of the guy on. So a couple of defensive substitutions. We'll go over those here momentarily. Two balls and two strikes now to Gideon Antle in center field. You got J.P. Gauthier is out there. The 2-2 breaking ball just misses high. So Gauthier started both of the games on Friday, and this is a guy who we talked to, to Coach Copeland. He said that Gauthier, he broke his ham eight, ba ham eight bone sorry, uh, early in the season, or sorry, in the preseason. He was projected to be their starting center fielder before the freshman Charlie Parcell took that position over. So Gauthier is a guy who's comfortable out there in center field. So those are the main changes for NIU. So Picky still stays at right field. Arato still at left field. Here's the payoff to Antle. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Jackson Stewart sits down Gideon Antle and NIU with a huge out there. We know how good Antle can be. And if anybody was going to be the spark plug, it is the guy that Coach Moore said is the source of energy for this Bobcat team. But after that, NIU with some great momentum, and there's another nasty breaking ball. And Alex Finney is down in the count 0-1. And yeah, Stewart's wasting no time with these pitches. Uh, not a lot of time in between pitches. As you saw, he almost started early right there. Um, keeps the batters on their toes. You want to doesn't allow them to settle into the box, and he's working quickly again. And you said that breaking ball. I mean, you work quickly, speed the batters timing up. Um, just physically with, with how fast you're pitching, and then you slow it way back down with the breaking balls. Trey Cassidy in the on-deck circle right now for the Bobcats getting ready to pinch hit the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball finds the lower corner of the zone. One ball and two strikes. Stewart showcasing fantastic command of not only the zone, but this game as well. 1-2 pitch. Popped in the air. This one is in right field. And Sapicki catches that fly ball for out number two. Before that at bat, you saw, or before that uh, that pitch right there, you saw Finney stepping into the box really slowly, taking his time, uh, holding up his hand to the umpire to, to keep the game stop while he got ready because just because of the way Stewart's been pitching so fast, that's kind of how you get your rhythm back because you got to step out of the box after each pitch and then step back in, take your time to get set up so that you can settle in into the into the box before that pitch comes at you. Here comes the pinch hitter, Trey Cassidy, 5'11", freshman from Northville, Michigan. Looks at the first pitch for a strike. Bases clear, two away. Bottom of the eighth inning in the Huskies. They lead 6-1. Ohio struck first, but NIU's been the only team barking since then. Cassidy only three games so far in the season, but in that really small sample size, he's hitting 500 with an 11.25 OPS. Obviously not something that you think is going to be sustained too far into the season, but a uh, good start to the season for him. Chop that over to Seeger, sprinting in at third base, coming in red hot off the bench as a defensive substitution, and the Huskies once again take care of business. Their fourth 1-2-3 inning of the afternoon. Here we go. We're headed to the ninth inning where NIU will look to add some insurance when we come back on Ohio Bobcat TV.
Eight innings up, eight innings down at Bob Wren Stadium. It all comes down to this ninth inning. And NIU, strong performance so far. And they want to put a cherry on top of it. Here in this final frame, it's Cooper Cone, Aaron Harper, and C.J. Sapicki. We did see Aaron Harper subbed out, so it was probably Seegers coming in for NIU. And it is Seegers that is in the on-deck circle. Also, a defensive change for the Bobcats. Trey Cassidy is in at catcher for Jackson Cawthorn. Cooper Cone at the plate, the only guy who didn't get to hit in that uh, eighth inning. A lot of walks. There was a home run by, by C.J. Sapicki. Um, looks like three walks, a single sacrifice bunt. So a good job by the Huskies to put two runs on the board in the last inning. And Cooper Cone, the only guy who wasn't a part of that. Yeah, this Huskies offense, they have been humming two runs in three out of their last four innings. And that one barreled over to center field. And caught by Gideon Ansel for out number one. So Cooper Cohn goes down on the fly out to center field. More than likely, his day will be one for four with a walk. So getting on the board for NIU. And here comes a new batter into the fray for the first time today. It's Christian Seegers. He was active at third base in his first inning. And a look at the first pitch fastball from Bonkle for strike number one. Seegers, a junior from Illinois. He's also transferred from Creighton, which is in the capital of college baseball, Omaha. Seeger's 0 for 1 on Friday, and he's only at bat. He came in as a defensive replacement in that game. He did strike out as he does here right now. Yeah, rung him up. Three pitches and a strikeout for Hudson Bonkel, his first one of the afternoon. So a quick two up, two down for NIU. And here comes the guy that homered the last time he was up. It's C.J. Sapicki. So Heat misses outside, and the count is one ball and no strikes. Before that, Sapicki was already having a good day, one for three with a run scored. Now you tack on that two RBI home run. And this is a day that he'll certainly remember. He's batting 167 going into this game. But once again, the theme of all the wins for NIU is production from the bottom of the order, and Sapicki a prime example. Yeah, they have done a massive job um, that bottom of the order with Sapicki, Parcell, and Jake Nelson. And like you mentioned, they've done it before. They did it on Friday. So Sapicki keeping that up. This is his first start so far of the series as he takes the walk right there. But uh, he was a, a pinch runner in the first game on Friday, came in, went 0 for 1. Uh, but today, single, home run, 2 for 4, really great day. So that's the third walk of the day for Hudson Bonkle. Something the Bobcats started off really strong was avoiding the walks. Now starting to creep up a little bit with seven. This is a team that has a walk to strikeout ratio at 98 strikeouts to 79 walks going into this game. Now over 100 strikeouts as a team after this game. But the walks also starting to get up there near 90. Got another pinch hitter into the game. Or uh, I wouldn't even say pinch hitter. He actually substitute defensively. It's J.P. Gauthier. And he's down the count 0 and 2. Gauthier started off his career at Illinois State for the Redbirds. He played 43 games in two seasons. He's got one on with two away in the top of the ninth. Six to one lead for NIU. Wine kick deal on that pitch, and it's low and away on the fastball. Gauthier 0 for 9 so far in this series. Again, this is the first series that he's played all year. His first game of the season was the first game on Friday. Uh, so still trying to get into the swing of things so far. See if he can literally get into the swing of things. Runner goes, pitch the ball. Cassidy's throw is not in time. It took a hop on its way to the second base back. So another stolen base. This time, Sapicki picks it up. Had their fair share of swipe bags today. At least three. Might be a few more, too. I'd have to check the stats a little bit more. But three to my count, at least. And they have done a good job on the bases. We've seen a lot of pickoff attempts. We know the pitchers are paying attention to these Huskies when they're on the base path, which helps a lot. Getting later in the game, we're seeing a lot more walks, as you mentioned before. So that could be a product of those, of those stolen bases. On the ground to the second baseman, Finney. 
and he throws it in time to first base, and that retires the side. Bunkle, solid ninth inning for him, but Ohio, they have a lot of work to do in the bottom of the ninth. They need five to send it to extras, six to walk it off. We'll see what happens here at Bob Wren Stadium for the bottom of the ninth when we come back. Trent Neuer leading things off as he comes in for Paulie Mancino to pinch hit. You also see A.J. Roush and Bryce Smith in the frame for the Bobcats, barring any sort of pinch hitters. Neuer is a graduate senior from Nicholasville, Kentucky. It's a player that has played a lot of summer ball around the Great Lakes Summer Collegiate League as he flies one to center field. And it's one up, one down. The newer he played for the Richmond Jazz and then the uh, Southern Ohio Copperheads the year after. A great start there for Jackson Stewart. He's in a safe position. Brower in line for the win with five innings pitched. When he exited the game, NIU was up 2-1. And then Stewart, on not only account of him pitching over three innings, but the fact when he came in, the Huskies were only up by uh, one. He is in a safe situation here be just the third save of the season for NIU if that were to occur. Yeah, he settled way into this game, three and a third so far, and looking to go four innings in this one as he tries to drop another curveball in, but it just doesn't fall into the zone for a strike. But the Bobcats have had a lot of trouble hitting against him. Just two hits, he's walked one, he struck out one guy, and uh, there's no sustained success for, for Ohio today. Here's A.J. Roush, the 2-1. And now it paints the outside of the zone for strike number two. Correction, second save of the season if Jackson Stewart were to complete this. 2-2 two -two pitch. Rug him up, called strike three. Chalk up another one for Jackson Stewart, his second strikeout of the day. He's had that outside corner down pat so far today. Got a couple of called strikes on that outside corner the Bobcats can't pull the trigger on. And now the fate of the Bobcats rest in Clay Cutter. He's coming in to pinch hit for Bryce Smith. Looks at the first pitch breaking ball, misses outside. Cutter, he's a senior from Centennial, Colorado. He started off his career at Iowa Western Community College. He won a 2022 conference championship. And, of course, Coach Moore's got ties to Nebraska area, so... That Nebraska, Iowa, Great Plains region, he's done a fantastic job of recruiting there, especially from the junior college ranks. Yeah, he hit 340, Cutter did, at Iowa Western. So a guy that knows how to get the bat on the ball, but he draws a walk here, and that's how you want to start it, two-out walk. Just got to get guys on base. You don't, you're not, you're not going to look for you know, too many extra base hits too early in this game because you, you have to get base runners. So that's the second walk of the afternoon for Jackson Stewart. And for NIU as a whole, just their second walk as a staff this game. It's impressive work. Dolan swings through the first pitch. Count is 0-1. Bobcats down to their final out. NIU 6, Ohio 1. Huskies with 11 hits. Bobcats with 6. Huskies with no errors. Bobcats with 2 errors. 0-1 home. Breaking ball. Waved at and a miss for strike number 2. Ohio. At the brink of losing this series. Early 0-2 count here for Nick Dolan, and he 
takes his time walking around near the plate as he wanted to get bad on that last pitch that he swung at. So a chance to complete the save and the series win for NIU, Jackson Stewart. Ready's at the mound. And the pitch is low and away. A Huskies team that was projected 10th in the conference. Only in front of Akron. Bobcats projected 5th. But NIU looking to steal one on the road. The 1-2. And that's fouled backwards. Count remains the same. For NIU, their next game will be against Purdue on Wednesday. And then they have a series against Akron next weekend. Ohio against Moorhead State next. And then Kent State. 1-2. Breaking ball. Check swing. Did not go. Dolan lays off. Almost got Nick Dolan there. He's definitely in the box looking for an off-speed pitch. So as soon as he saw that one, I'm sure his eyes lit up, realized it was going to end up out of the zone and was just able to hold up. 2-2 two -two from Stewart. Breaking ball fouled off. And the count remains the same. A very competitive plate appearance here for Nick Dolan, who was the hero in game two of this series. We're in the rubber match. Each team has won one game in this three-game set. 2-2 two -two from Stewart. On the ground to the left side, Seegers takes the two-hop. The throw is in time, and Northern Illinois goes on the road to Athens, Ohio, and they beat the Bobcats 6-1 to one today and win the series two games to one. Got to feel really good for NIU to get this early win in conference in, a, in the first weekend series. Of course, they struggled record-wise heading into this series, but able to get it done against the Bobcats, and that's going to be a good look going forward in conference play. So the winning pitcher today, it's Adam Brower, who finishes the game five innings pitch, four hits, one earned run, no walks, four strikeouts, and earns the win for the Huskies. As for Jackson Stewart, he earns the save with two strikeouts on today's performance, a four-inning save. Pretty impressive stuff by Stewart. Blake Gasky, he'll be tagged with the loss despite a great performance for him pitching five innings of work. So with this win, the Huskies improved to 5-11 and 11 on the season. They'll take on Purdue on Wednesday. As for the Bobcats, they now fall to 5-8, and eight, and they'll take on Moorhead State on Tuesday. Any final thoughts from this game, Zach? Yeah, the thing that I want to focus most on is Northern Illinois' pitching and their ability to just consistently throw strikes throughout the entire game. We've talked about it a couple of times. Their walk count, only two walks in the entire game. Both went to Stewart. Broward didn't walk anyone. They threw a lot of strikes. They threw a lot of strikes early in the count. And they only gave up six total hits, just the one earned run on Brower. They did a fantastic job. This is a team who came into this series with an ERA up over 10, but able to bring that way down so far in this series because of their excellence on the mound. So what a great game. What a great series to begin. Mac play the NIU Huskies. They win this series two games to one and win today 6-1. To one for our producer Jordan Bose, for our brave cameraman Sam Mater, who struggled out there in the cold, but he did a fantastic job getting all the shots for us today. My color commentator Zach Mothersball and me, Cedric Granger. I wish you a goodbye and a happy Sunday here from Bob Wren Stadium, NIU. They're going back home to DeKalb, smiling. Why? With a six to one victory. Thank you for joining us here on Ohio Bobcat TV.